Hi everyone, it's Tracy here again from Temperance Tarot and it is time for my January deck review of the decks that I have used in or acquired in January. Uh, as you, you probably know, I'm going through an oracle deck and a tarot deck a week to see if they stay or if they go and here are the ones I used in January. I started out January with the Tarot Apocalypses, which I never would have bought. I got it in a trade, because I'm in a trade, I'm much more willing to give, give stuff a try and just see how I like it. I do hate this, the way it's packaged because the, the cards just kind of slide all over the place. Uh, this is, I would say, the sister deck to, or brother deck to the Tarot Illuminati and has much the same vibe as the Tarot Illuminati. I can't say that we particularly got on. I had the Tarot Illuminati and I gave it away because I believe it was Kelly Bear who said it was visual vomit. And I think this one is too, although that is a really nice Hierophant card, um, simply because you know, I like the I like the idea of it, but you know, this, this is not, this isn't a, this, I don't think this is a deck for me. Although I did find the way that they treated the, the book is very good. The book is, is really very good. And the way they treated the court cards, I thought was very interesting. And I wanted to, to read a little bit about that. Let's see. I have the place marked. You'd think I didn't have it marked, but I do. I have it marked. Um, they have princess, princess, prince, qu princess, prince, queen, and king, and their elemental associations that they use are a little bit different from what I'm used to. The princesses are earth, the prince is air, the queen is water, and the king is fire, which I generally see the prince is fire, and the, the only one that I, I see is the same as, as the queen, which they've got is water. Um, but I thought it was very interesting, and, and a whole chart here that talked about why they kind of why they did it that way, which makes sense if you if you read it. But it's just not the what I the kind of the associations that I use. Um, but the book is very good, and it it would be very good with any you know if you were just learning any Rider Waite system. It has a lot of full color images and that sort of thing. But I don't think this deck is going to stay with me. It's, I'm, I'm discovering that I think there are going to be more things that I'm getting rid of than I'm going to keep through this experiment. Which is, is kind of good because I've got, I've got too much stuff. Then the Oracle deck that I used the first week was the Oracle of E. This was, I believe, deck three of the Hay House Sale. And this one's okay. I actually think I'm going to keep it, but I'm not going to use the book. I like the keywords, the words on the cards, but I like to take those words and come up with my own meaning for the cards because they seemed, I don't know, a bit overly positive. And, and you know, I don't mind hug decks at all. I don't mind very positive. There are so frequently times where I need to be told, you can do this, you can do this. But let's see. Let's see if we can find an example. Well, it's not that bad. Like, here's card 23 at your service. It says, I hope it's comforting to know that there is a big universe butler who is working behind the scenes, taking care of all the details, making sure every little thing is turning out exactly as planned. This butler is as loyal as Fido and determined as Diana. Never, ever give up. So, yeah, I'm not real sure. I think that there's somebody behind the scenes who's taking care of me. Um, I might believe that there is a greater intelligence out there, but I'm not sure I... I I jive with that but at the same time I could take that at your service thing and turn it around to be how can I be of service to other people or something like that so I think I might keep this one and just not use the book 
All right, week two, I have the Celtic Wisdom Tarot. I believe this is out of print, and if, I'm sorry. But I've had it for a while, and I wanted to use it. Uh, the artwork in this deck is just glorious. It's my kind of stuff, my kind of artwork. Um, everything's different in this deck. All of the suits are different. All of the court cards are different. All of the major arcana are different. But it still follows the same basic pattern. Um, so you do have to you do have to read the book to kind of understand what's going on here, which is not bad. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, elopement of art. So yeah, you can't just pick up this deck and read it without the book. It's very Celtic. I mean, it's very Celtic from what I know. You know, I don't know anything about. What, if, if it's actually accurate. But a lot of what the book talks about is the legend behind the card. So if we take the balancer right here, who's number 11, it gives oems and uh, oem trees and oem letters. It gives divinatory meanings and reverse meanings. Excuse me. Uh, the meaning is equity, justice, receiving what's deserved, a fair outcome. And then it has a soul wisdom statement. The balancer of harmony opens the ways, but she also guards them. A life lived in full integrity is one that submits all its motivations of actions with truth first, rather than seeking to find out how truth may be bent to serve us. So it's it's the justice card. Uh, and they've taken a uh, some sort of legend and put it into the justice position. And that's pretty much what they've done with most of these, is the divinant, divinatory meaning sort of molds into the Rider Waite Smith meaning to the for the most part. Again, this is a little too much for me right now. It's a little more than I want to try to tackle because I you know, again, I've said I'm a Rider weight girl. I want to stick to the Rider weight system until I'm a little more comfortable with with others. Yeah, and that, and that I can use oracles because they're generally self-explanatory. You don't need to know a system. So that's the Celtic Wisdom Tarot. That one is probably also going to leave my collection if um, anybody has a particular interest. I, I just don't see myself pulling that one out and, and using that one. Then the Oracle deck that I used in week two was the Sacred Traveler, Denise Lynn. Um, this is the last deck I got in the Hay House sale. And this is definitely pretty much a hug deck. You were strong me on measure. All is possible. Success expands your life. But it's unapologetically what it is. Sorry. Shout out to the heavens with happiness. And again, not I'm not overly excited about it. I'm finding that Oracle decks are kind of the hardest to please me. Although apparently you'd think that I'd be really hard to please. I'm really not. I'm really not that hard to please. But this one, is, that's cute in the flow. It's all smooth sailing. Uh, I, I can see myself pulling this one out in times where you know, of high stress where it's just, oh my God, I need a, I need somebody to tell me I can do it. And the book, the book is right nice on this one too. It's, um, it's affirmative, but it's, it's right nice. So this one will probably stay in my collection. And this is an, this is a newer Hay House deck. It's not glossy. It's not gilded, but at the same time, it's that nice matte finish that, that I like. So that was week two. Week three was the Celestial Tarot. And there's another deck that I just don't think is for me. This is my pet peeve. White borders on the backs of cards with a, with a really dark middle. And then there's not white borders on the front. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a little pet peeve. 
But this deck, this is very astrological. And I, I would, ex I would ex expect that there's a bigger book that goes with this that I don't have. But this, you, you need to know, if you, if you know astrology, you would get a lot out of this deck. Uh, again, I don't know a lot of, of astrology. I know my sun, moon, and rising sign, and that's pretty much it. Uh, but if you, if you did, I can see this being a really good working deck for you. But I just don't, again, this, this one didn't, I don't particularly like the artwork. It's, I don't know. It has a bunch of, and it's also uh, got a lot of Tree of Life stuff in it. It's, if you, um, let me see. You know, there's a, there's a astrological sign and a, a planet sign on a lot of these cards. And a lot of the majors also have the Tree of Life hidden in them somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this, but in the Hanged Man, blasted glare. There in the corner, there's a tree of life, and it probably is indicating where on the tree of life this falls, but um, I don't do Kabbalah either. So this is just not the deck for me. This one is going in the go away pile. And the Oracle deck that I used that week, week three, was the Crystal Oracle. Um, as much as I love my crystals, I hated this deck hated this deck. I stopped using it. And it's not the pictures. The pictures are lovely. It's got, you know, close-up images of a gemstone or a, a crystal and the name of the crystal. And that's all that's on the card. And I might be able to use it without the book. It was cards like this that made me hate this deck. Here's Ruby. Your passion for someone you love is being rekindled and you will soon find yourself glowing with a newfound sense of joy and wonder for life. That sounds to me like a fortune out of a Chinese fortune cookie. And I do not want my Oracle decks to give me fortunes out of fortune cookies. I am trying to find Oracle decks that will make me grow spiritually. And that's all I'm really looking for right now is spiritual growth. I'm not looking for fortunes. I'm looking for inner guidance and inner growth. So there you go. I might keep this one for the images. I don't think I'll use the book. And then this week, I have been using a deck that I do absolutely love. Laurie at Thrifty Mystic did a trade with me and she sent me her self, the or her make playing cards version of the Greenwood Tarot. And I love this deck, which is really funny because I don't like the Wildwood. Um, and the cards basically mean the same thing. But I just love the artwork on the Greenwood so much more. I know I sound like I'm sacrilege. I don't love Will Worthington. I don't hate him. I think his people look a little awkward sometimes. But he's not my favorite. And I do love... Oh, God, isn't that gorgeous? I do love the, this artwork on the Greenwood Tarot. I can use the Wildwood book because they do pretty much mean the same thing, but there's I, there's too much stuff in the Wildwood book. They went a little too far over the edge in embellishing the meanings that were there originally from the artist. And someone archived her website with her, you know, one one paragraph descriptions and explanations of the cards and that's where I go to for help with these cards and this is the back that Lori picked out thank you Lori it's gorgeous and I love this deck and I just this one's staying with me forever and then I've used a couple of Oracle decks this week uh, Lori also in that trade sent me the Celtic Shamans pack which is the same artist Chelsea, Jessica, Jessica Potter. I used it for a couple of days, but then dis and, and discovered that it really is an oracle system. It doesn't do well for just a single card daily draw, so I'm just going to put it to the side for now until I have some time to focus on it. 
And then I got this deck because I heard that it was as good as the Vampire, Le Vampire, which I absolutely love. So I got this one. I've only had this one for a few days. I am I'm so disappointed that it's not Blue Angel. This is another one like the Mythic Oracle, I believe, that was originally published by Blue Angel. And when it came over to America, it ended up being published by another publishing house who put it on crappy cardstock. And look at this. It looks, now I don't know if this is true of the Blue Angel one or not, but it looks like I took my corner rounder to it. And I did not. It was brand new. Um, not real sure how I'm going to get along with this deck. I do like the images, which is saying something because I don't generally like Jasmine Beckett Griffith. But the first card that I pulled for a daily draw was this one, Fairy of the Green World. And immediately I thought, oh, this is going to be about, you know, curbing your jealousy and not being envious of other people and that sort of thing. No, that's not what it was about at all. Take time to grow plants or tend a vegetable patch or an herb garden. No. I don't want you to tell me to plant plants. I am looking for oracle decks to help me grow spiritually. Now, I think that eventually this deck and its messages might be spot on for me, but right now, this is not what I'm looking for. So it's gonna, it's not gonna get traded. It's just gonna get put away for a little while. So out, yes, out of all the decks that I used this month, the only one that I really loved was the Greenwood Tarot. I think, most, most of them will go away, and, but I will keep a couple of them and see if I can't work with them later. Now, I have gotten a few other decks this month that I haven't used so much. This, in this pouch, is another from my trade with Thrifty Mystic. And it's the Roarig Tarot. Something I've always wanted to try. I've always been kind of intimidated by it. But... I want to give it a shot. I've always thought the images were just very fascinating, and it might be for me like the Voyager Tarot, while where the really weird images are weird images that make sense to me. So I'm going to give that one a try, but I haven't done it yet. Oh, gosh, I've gotten five decks this month. Six if you count Shadows. So I've got six decks this month. Well, two of them were Kickstarter or Indiegogo that I paid for months ago. So, Mystic Mondays, um, I, we've all heard about the, we're a little unhappy with the way she managed her Kickstarter campaign, and I was then, on top of that, add insult to injury, can you see the, the dings on the box, and the ding on the side of the box was so, is actually so bad, I don't know if you can see that, here, this ding that it makes it difficult to get the lid off the box. It's like having a little lock on the box. So I was fully prepared to hate this deck <laughs> because I'm a petty, petty woman. But uh, I can't. And on top of that, there are scuffs on some of the cards and there's spots where the, the, they're just not perfect. I do love the holographic gilding on the edges, but I was so prepared to hate this deck. And this deck, as soon as I pulled it out and started drawing cards from it, it said, sit down, bitch. Let me tell you what it's really all about. So I'm afraid that I am actually going to love this deck and it's going to work very well for me. It, if, if you've seen some of my favorites, this aesthetic is wouldn't surprise you that it would be one of my favorites. Although it does tend to be a little pippish and I'm not real big on pips. But you know I love um, Stephen Bright's deck and I love the Ellis deck and these are sort of similar in aesthetic and so yes this one would speak to me I love this one uh, so yeah I'm afraid that as much as I wanted to hate this deck the hate is just not gonna be there it's gonna work for me most of the time as I see there's another very pippish card but then the Two of Cups is very good. And the Three of Pentacles, also very pippish. 
the Nine of Cups again. There's not much there to go on. So I imagine I'll pull on my standard Rider Waite meanings. And then this eight, is that the eight? No, it's the seven. <laughs> yeah, that one works. But then this three of wands. <laughs> so we'll see. But I don't think I'm gonna hate it. Let's see, what else did I get this month? I have the Mibramig that has washi tape on it because when it came from Amazon, the box was busted out at the bottom, but I don't care. This is an adorable little deck. This is sort of like Terra of a Magical Forest or The Magical Forest. It's a Rider Waite Smith clone. It's got animals. I saw a walkthrough on Dark Star Divination's channel and thought, you know, I really like that one. I think I'd like this one better than Terror of the Magical Forest. I love a goat. I love a good goat. And their faces are, are expressive, which is what I love. And I love this weird cat on the bag. Isn't he cool? So I think this is going to be a... Oh, wait, do you see the Hierophant. I think this will be a solid working deck for me. I, there's something about it that I just find appealing. Okay. And this is the deck when I went to the witchy shop today, which I go to the witchy shop about once a month. I don't let myself go any more often than that. I got the symbol on. I have always, always loved the artwork on this deck. It is an oracle. I would call it an oracle. And I need to keep it in order because the only markings on the deck are the astrological and planetary signs. And I don't know them well enough to be able to say, hmm, I know what card that is, so I, now I can go look it up in the book and see what it means. So I need to, I'm going to, I was thinking about writing titles on them because there are titles in the little white book, but I think I'm just going to number them and then put the number, oops, number in the little white book. Got to keep these in order. I will never get them back in order again if I don't. But I, I just always really love the artwork on this one. And I saw, I can't remember who and I'm sorry, I saw somebody's review of this deck and they said it was just a very plain speaker. Uh, I did read a little bit of the little white book today and you can use it for a single card draw, which is good because I frequently do that with Oracle decks. Or you can use it in a three card, which I really liked the three card. They use the same spread for everything. And it's uh, the problem, the way through the problem, and the outcome. And I'm sure I will try that. But if you, um, if you do a single card, you just go with the meaning that's in the problem position. So I'm really looking forward to working with that. I might work with that one next week. We'll see. And then the last deck. Yeah, that's the first one. The last deck that I got this week. The Magician Longs to See. I backed this on Indiegogo in October of 2016. I'm a huge Twin Peaks fan. And when I saw this deck, I absolutely had to have it. Then the people who make Twin Peaks found out that this deck was being made. And so the poor um, creator got all tied up in copyright issues. <laughs> and he continued to work with the lawyers in Hollywood for a year until he got permission to do this. Now, if you look at this deck, it never says, well, it does now, but at the time, it never said Twin Peaks. It just said The Magician Longs to See. And the people look sort of like the people in the, I mean, because I know the show so well, I know that that's Lucy. But it doesn't really look that much like Lucy. Now this one, this uh, Benjamin Horn, does look a little bit like Benjamin Horn, enough to where I recognize it. But it's a Rider Waite clone using 
Oh. Miguel Ferrer. Using the characters from Twin Peaks. Like, this is Death, and that's Leland Palmer. And, oh, Grace, I believe her name was. Or maybe that was the actress's name. Laura's mom. Laura Palmer's mom. And see, on the night... Ed Hurley. Isn't that his name? Ed Hurley. I can't always remember all of their names. And the tower has uh, Benjamin Horn and Catherine Martell falling from the burning uh, lumber plant. And here's um, the Six of Swords, and that's Agent Cooper, and I think that's Ed Hurley uh, going probably to One-Eyed Jacks over in Canada. Uh, the Four of Swords is Leland crying on Laura's coffin. Uh, the Five of Cups, that's Laura's mother being distraught over the death of her, her daughter. The Three of Swords is, well, it was upside down. It's the tape that Laura made for Dr. Jacoby. I love the Seven of Swords. Um, is that Hawk or is that Cooper? I think it's Cooper. And one of the things in his cup is a donut. Um, oh, the Empress is Catherine Martell. And you see it sort of looks like her if you know the show, but the King of Cups is Dr. Doc Hayward. Temperance is, oh, I cannot remember the, the character's name, but the wings are pie, pieces of pie. I mean, that's fabulous. But the real reason that I bought this deck, and let's see if I can find her. Oh, I love this one. The Hierophant is General Briggs, Bobby Briggs' dad, who was both establishment and extremely supernatural at the same time. The moon is uh, Agent Cooper, once he had been possessed by Bob. And this is, this all took place the, all of these cards, this is before the reboot. And here's here's Bob as the devil. Nadine as strength when she was, uh, still thought she was in high school again. We do have a couple of extra cards. We have the writer, which I will take these out. This is Mark Frost. And we have the director, which is David Lynch. Chariot Judgment. Where is? There she is. The High Priestess. This is the reason I bought the deck. The High Priestess is the Log Lady. So, if you know Twin Peaks, you understand where I'm coming from. Those are my January decks. And I hope y'all have a lovely, lovely day or night or whatever you're having. And thank you so much for watching if you put up with me for this long. Bye.